welcome to the show. I'm RH. I'm not RH Max. This channel's name. Damn it. I'm Max, host of the RH Max channel. I'm not here to sell you anything or get rich dreaming. I just choose my products wisely. And have you heard the gospel of Richard Hart? If you haven't, hex.com. Uh, yeah, I'm a little bit different breed if you haven't noticed yet. Um, I'm here to bring quality content though. And uh, that's why I brought on Mr. Beach himself. I always think of beaches and five o'clock and having a having a sunrise, having one of those sunrise drinks, and I see Cabana streams. So uh, yeah, Mr. Cabana Crypto has uh, decided to join us today. Um, yeah, it's uh, it's been it's been it's been an interesting day. I uh, I've been uh, fasting a lot lately. Just came off Sam's stream. If you want some hardcore RH Maxi stuff, get on a, go rewatch Sam's stream on Crypto in the Evening. Uh, I laid it all out on there. So um, I'm a little I'm under caffeinated. I'm underfed, but I'm ready to go. It's giving me energy. Uh, it's a cabana is the catalyst catalyst of today's episode. So uh, without further ado, welcome to the show. What's up, brother? How you doing? Good to see you. It's good to uh, it's good to be on a stream. I don't think we've been on a stream together. I have yet, not I yet, man. I think okay. you know we crossed paths on uh, Maddie's last night uh, briefly, right. but I I feel like I'm lacking or slacking now after that introduction because you know the fasting thing i i got mad respect for that brother that's it's Try. tough like it, it uh, is i i need to get back into that uh, i've got the summer travel uh eating bod on right now so it wasn't like it was like three yeah. months ago so uh g- good on you man I hear. I mean, it's it's something that you don't really realize how much you don't need to eat until you start fasting. Yeah. It's like, wow, I can survive on much less than I've ever survived on. Yeah. And uh, it's not like you walk around. Like, I think people think, oh, if you're fasting, you just walk around. You just like, you just sit in on the, you know, you just sit down all day because you don't have enough energy to walk around. No, like I have a very rigorous exercise routine every day. And yeah, do I feel a little bit lighter? Do I feel like I need to drink more water? Yeah, of course. I feel like I need to like compensate for it a little bit. But overall, just like eating, you know, a, a spoonful of peanut butter at, for lunch or fasting, like to, not eating anything, just drinking coffee, drinking water, yeah. uh, stuff like that. Uh, I've been uh, been getting into LaCroix and bubbly lately because uh, I, I want to make sure I'm trying to pound down those pounds before my get my desert bot. I got to get that desert bot. Off <laughs> nice. I can't say beach bot. I got to say desert bot because there are no beaches uh, no. in the in the middle well, of the desert. Get get yourself one or get to one, and you know you'd be all right. But I mean, even yeah. even that man, like the 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 lifestyle, it, it takes a, a conscious effort to to get there. I, in my experience, and tell me if you've you know felt this, but like I think it's like even if I'm doing keto and intermittent fasting or something like that, like the first. 24 to 36 hours is the hardest and once you get past that hump then it's like okay i got this but man there's there's yeah. that first day or so is rough yeah, yeah. it's I, I feel well i've been doing keto keto is basically a lifestyle for me the last yeah I'd say over a year now so i don't nice. remember what life was like before keto honestly like yeah. i used to eat a lot of bread i guess i did um <laughs> but uh I, to your point like it the first you know 24 48 is the hardest I think that even when you're sitting there, even if you do like a 12 or, or 18 hour or 24, once you, you like, I, I remember sitting there, you know, I'm sitting there watching TV on the couch. I just feel so hungry. And for about 30 minutes, you go through this like hunger pain. Yeah. It's like this primitive instinct of like, I, I, I'm craving something. I'm craving anything to get nutrition. And then if you just ignore it, if you just drink that bubbly or you just, you know, just, just what, occupy yourself, distract yourself, Substitutes. watch TV or whatever. Yeah. Do, just, some, do something yeah after you get past that 30 minute 30 45 minute i'm like oh i don't even feel hungry anymore like you're yep. just like nope your your we're body good. has just like been like nope that we're not getting food right now so we're good yep. so it's just uh you should be good at this delayed gratification you should be good at this stuff man so, i i am all right at it but, you know just yeah. not the whole fasting thing little, little keto mixed in every now and then when i need it i can do like a 10 14 day spurt but i still yeah. gotta have you know when it comes back down to it like a good bacon cheeseburger and a a, a beer mm. <laughs> rum I and cokes burgers. can only last so long but yeah i love burgers they're so yeah. good i mean i that's the good thing about keto you can eat burgers and i actually buy keto bread that tastes okay it doesn't taste bad it tastes like yeah, bread, all honestly. right so get get a telegram me uh what kind of bread you use because oh, i have definitely. tried a lot of stuff and oh some... i got one for you man right. or a wheat 
I put it in the chat right now and I can send okay. you the link later too. But Aura Wheat, any of their hamburger buns, their uh, regular white bread, whatever, Aura Wheat, fantastic. Okay. Fantastic. Aura right. Wheat. O R O Wheat. Um, but yeah, man, you can live a regular, you don't have to be like this weirdo who doesn't eat bread. You can do like, you can find, it took me a long time, but I found good substitutes for this stuff. Um, yeah, my know. first time actually trying it was a struggle because I, um, I didn't like when you get into it it's really simple math and it's counting carbs and it's like okay reading like a lot of reading of ingredients and whatnot so it's just like oh, okay well you go by these lists that are online and it's like okay well you, you struggle because those are pretty limited but after you get the hang of it and it's like okay well you know i can do this and this and this oh this is actually carb friendly and yeah. you can actually mix and match pretty good to get through I longest I've ever done is probably like a month, but you know, if it's okay. a lifestyle for you, yeah. props to you, brother. <laughs> I can't see myself going back. Honestly, I, uh, good for you. Yeah. I, th I think it's just, it's just, it's all in your mind, man. Like I know it's easy to say that, but it's really yeah. all these things in life are just in your mind. If you make yourself do it, if you take away all the incentives, if you take all the food that is not keto out of your house, or if you know, if you live with your wife and family or stuff, stuff like that, you just make sure that, you know, there you replace them with substitutes and you like, you can do it. Anybody can do any of this stuff. Like, yeah. I, I think, I think so, it's so easy in the modern world to just like you live to eat. You really, you're excited for every meal. And it's like, should you be that excited to eat? Food? Like if you think about what you're doing, you're taking something and you're chewing it up in your mouth and you're swallowing it and it comes out the end later on. Like, and you feel good. You feel like this, like nice high for, I don't know what, 45 minutes after you eat. Right. And it could be better or worse, but like, it's really just this thing you do and it shouldn't be that exciting. And when it's so exciting where you just can't skip a meal, you can't have anything but your favorite food all the time. You got a problem. You got a problem. That's what I'd say. I get it. I get it. Yeah. But anyways, so, yeah, let's uh, talk to the chat before they all leave because this is uh, <laughs> Crypto show. This is the content you were looking for. Yeah. Fasting. This is a uh, me and Cabana give you diet tips. That's what we're doing. Uh, Oregon's trying to, yeah, we, we have this um, Washington state uh, hexagons group and uh, some Oregonians have, have came by some, some, some nice Oregonians. And now we're, we're decide. I, I guess there's a decision where are we going to create a Pacific Northwest group? Is it, are, are we going to just going to absorb the Oregonians? Uh, are they going to absorb us as a, whole struggle going on jerry says yes i would say like do a bigger uh swath like a regional thing and then if it gets to be you know pretty big then you can divide it out but get get everybody connected first like reach out and branch out and yeah. you know get a lot of states involved and then if you know the as word spreads to the states you know do your states and mm -hmm. locals but yeah start big yeah, I mean, I like, I, and we, we have been doing it for the recent meetup. Uh, we kind of like created another group to, to filter people like, okay, are you actually nearby, you know, and all this stuff. Because some people, they're in the area, they come, but they're not from here. And some of the meetups, we kind of want it to be like just locals because, you know, we're, it's just kind of off the cuff. Oh, we're going to meet this bar somewhere. But some of them are bigger meetups. Oh, we're going to meet at this beach, you know, in three weeks or something. So, yeah, it's, uh, it's. It's, it's interesting. All right, Sean Bullshit. Yeah, I assume you're talking about my uh, me going into depth about fasting and stuff. No, I don't. Uh, I BS <laughs> rarely, sir. I BS rarely. New <laughs> intro is coming. That's a good point, Jerry. Uh, new intro, uh, proof of beard only. Is is uh, He's on the, he's my media guy. He's my meme guy. And uh, he's crazy. Same. He's been my media guy for uh, right? over a year now. And I still have yet to get a happy hour intro. Oh, God. So. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> proof of I beard. He, he knows he's on retainer. So he needs to be proof of work for you. It sounds like he's on retainer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's no, no, it's not his fault. It's my fault. Totally my fault. So. Oh, okay. Never yeah. mind. This is a different story then. Never mind. Proof of beard. Yeah. You're doing fine. Yeah. Proof um, of beard's awesome. Mr. Markable. We like Mr. Markable. He's, he's yeah. almost done with the intro. Actually, we, we've been, uh, I told him I was going to be on telegram much more often the last next 24 hours to make sure he gets every, every feedback he has on every iteration. Um, so we're getting close, Jerry. We're getting close. Yeah, he's cool to work with, just with the concepts. Um, you know, he's 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 always wanting feedback and just the the brief interactions and ideas that I had um, with him. You know, we're we'll put something cool together, no doubt. So I've just been yes. slacking on it totally my on my end. Yeah, no, he's he's great. He's he's definitely been uh, fun to work with so far. 
Oi, oi, Mango Junkie. Oi, uh, oi. Michael, Michael Light, unfortunately, cooking dinner show. Curious if you community. Yeah, we're going to get into that. We're going to get into the community a little bit. I got a couple questions on that for sure. And you can watch the replay or, or check back in when you're, uh, when you're finished cooking, whatever you want to do. Fireballs on the way. We certainly hope so. Is, uh, <laughs> no. There's going to be some hot takes today. Cavana's already set it up front. He's like, I'm going to get on there and I'm going to tell everyone. If this uh, all, not just uh, f- yeah, footsteps. I th- you mentioned the uh, sunrise stream. Foot- footsteps was there. And I think that reference mm-hmm. is to me doing a couple double fireballs on the beach. At, oh, like, sorry. I took it. I took at- it fitter- figuratively. I should have taken it literally. <laughs> My but yeah, we, we, can, we can spit some stuff. There's plenty of good topics right. here. I actually don't like fireball, but I would do one with you. So if you want to do a fireball, I would. Uh, I mean, we might have to pause for a brief intermission, but I can go into the other room and grab something later. Well, I say I don't have anything. Though. That's the thing, and, and I'm and I'm fasting. It's 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 fireball yeah, fireballs. Friendly. Yeah, you can't do Is that. Fast has, friendly? No, absolutely not. Um, that has carbs, <laughs> sugar. You can do like uh, liquor in keto, just like regular whiskeys, rums, and stuff like that. So. It's gonna be uh, health think, tips wife. with Cabana. So. Yeah, <laughs> gonna clip, gonna clip that one and put you on a like, hashtag uh, healthy, healthy life, healthy. <laughs> it's okay uh, to drink hard liquor on keto and when fasting. I, I think if you're drinking hard liquor on keto and fasting, you, you, there's some other areas of your life that you're not paying attention to. I, I imagine. Uh, there's again, there's the bread or a wheat. Uh, and I'll, I'll share the link later. Uh, garlic bread is life. Man, I still love bread. I still love garlic bread. I still love pastries, and I still eat them from time to time. I, I, I mean, I'm not like a like super extremely strict keto. It's just I think I have my I have my cheat days, but I always make up for it. That's the thing. Like, hold yourself accountable. If you cheat, like for, for me, if I if I if I go and have like a couple pastries in the morning on a Saturday or whatever, I'm going to go work out harder. I'm going to do something. I have to keep myself accountable because I can't let it build up, especially you know. If you have goals and stuff, you, you can't let it affect that. Uh, so you don't have to be like this, like crazy, insane, psycho person when you do that. But as long as you make up for it, keep hold yourself accountable. That's what's most important. Yeah, that's kind of where I'm at now with uh, after my summer of traveling and eating. I, I've been putting in the work. It's just the eating habits have yet to come down. So I, I, that's my area yeah. of, of uh, much needed improvement. You will not eat and still be happy, W. <laughs> <laughs> w, WF Metallic loves his cricket bags. Yeah. Oh God, he likes his flashlights too. Yeah, yes, he does. <laughs> he does. Um, yeah, we'll talk about Maddie's project a little bit later on too. If, if Cabana has anything uh, spicy to say about it, only if he has that. <laughs> uh, yeah, let's let's get into it, man. Let's. Uh, yeah, man. So I don't I don't know that much about you. So how much do you make before taxes? Every no, not that. Can you? Yeah, can you dude, I make. No. Nah. Right. Yeah. I, can you? Can you just kind of go into like how did you get into crypto? How did you find Richard Hart stuff? What like how did you come up with your name? Why are you always look like you're on the beach, whether you are or not? Like, just give me give me the lowdown of like so I get to know you a little bit better. I am on the beach right now, mom. Um, no, <laughs> I can tell uh, that's a desktop background. <laughs> but the yesterday, sun is always shining sure at, on happy hour. Uh, yeah. No, um, man, where do I where do I start? So. I usually, you know, just, you know, start from the beginning as the quickest I can go is like in college, just, um, you know, you always have this goal or at least I did of, you know, how soon can I get out of school, get a good job, um, get that good job, progress in that job and get to a level to where I'm really happy and then get to, where maybe I don't have to work that job anymore. So that was like always like the stair step goal for me. And so long term horizon, you know, hence my affinity for hex. But this was like in college. So I was like always looking for investing my money. How can I how can I make that do better? And um, you know, I started just in, just trading, not I can't really say trading stocks, just investing stocks, pro in in stocks for three, six month periods, uh, when I was in college and lasted, I mean, through probably my, you know, work, you know, early work career, uh, early thirties, you know, still investing in stocks, you know, putting the money in, you know, and just keeping the long-term time horizon, but always looking for kind of like those revolution, 
revolutionary investments slash concepts. So yeah. like, and Apple comes along, uh, Google comes along and this is probably like mid late, uh, two thousands when, Ooh, it's a good time. I, I, yeah, I got into those. I mean, the, the things were crashing, awful iPhones yeah. coming out. So it's kind of this, you know, weird, you know, convergence of things and got into some of those because like, those are the things like I, I wanted gains. I wanted to, you know, what's something that I can hold on to for five, 10, 15 more years and be comfortable with not having to like trade the up and downs every day. And I'm guilty of, you know, trading back then, like so many people are, cause you want to catch the rips and, um, you know, sell those and you want to, you want to buy all the dips, but it's, it's not easy like that ever. No. And, um, probably I can always get the, the years a little intertwined, but like 2017, 2018, right before the, uh, huge Bitcoin ramp to 20 K got in, um, you know, start really started reading a lot about cryptocurrency and, you know, going back to the thesis of, you know, finding revolutionary investments, what, you know, can, you know, get you the most in the next five, 10, 15 years. Uh, the more I read about cryptocurrency, the more it signaled to me is like, man, this, this could be a potential game changer. And the more I dug in and immersed myself in reading and videos, the more I was into it. So I say that and I buy Litecoin as my first crypto. We all bought Litecoin. <laughs> we all bought Litecoin. At one point, if you've been around, at one point, you had some Litecoin. Um, Little chicken but, to uh, the moon. Yeah. yeah. So uh, uh, got some of that. Uh, some later on, you know, some Ethereum, some Bitcoin, but it, it all started with that. But the the concept was, you know, seeing you know this potentially revolutionary asset class, um, identifying it and learning about it to see how it could potentially you know benefit me and change the world and i guess months or i guess less than a year after i don't even know the time frame um i'd been i'd seen richard hart on youtube um you know watch watch some of his videos and then i st really started getting into his thoughts on Bitcoin hex at the time. And I was like, all right, yeah, I like, I like this concept this is pretty cool. And, and he, he spoke his mind, did not care what anyone else thought and was just like, this is how it is. This is, this is my way of thinking. And it's not to like, you know, uh, just be outright condescending to anyone. It, the hate was coming towards him. If, you know, if it was there and he was like, no, no. And he's like, yeah, I'll correct you. And he just put it out there and I was like, all right, dug into it, dug into it. Time goes on. Adoption amplifier time comes around December 2019, I think. So he's like, don't go all in the first day. So I'm like, I know better shows, than that. Shows you just, the, uh, the uh, EOS chart, right? Yeah, well, that that was there, and there's another interesting story about that. So remind me about that because um, I don't okay. think many people uh, know about that one. Okay. Um, but um, yeah, he he was pretty much, you know, he's like, if it were me, he's like, probably not the best advice to go in on the first day. Didn't, but I did put like a small fraction of an ETH in on that very first day, just to say. I was a day one, you know, uh, adoption amplifier guy. So waited, 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 and probably after day 10, put a little more and probably day between days 30, 45, between days 30, 35, 45, I had really amped up the dollar cost averaging and, you know, the rest is history from there. Um, the uh, funny thing is about the EOS chart that you mentioned, um, yeah he had posted that and I believe there was that EOS chart um, actually peaked. So the, the best time to, and the, the reason I'll go back up a, 
for a second. The, the reason that he posted that chart was pretty much to say, here's a, not even a guideline, but here's how um, uh, um, similar sacrifice or not sacrifice adoption amplifier went. Yeah. So, and I think it was like day 150. Uh, somebody can correct me if I'm wrong, but it was like, you know, 150, 200, something like that, that that was the best time to get in. Mm. And a lot of people went by that chart. And if you were in the telegram, you know, he, he posted that chart, but you could read between the lines and certain, you know, telegram messages. And he was like, probably, you know, he, nothing is exact. So it's like, you know, you don't, he's like this, these charts are just for reference. So, you know, he's never going to say as the founder, you know, this is what you should do. He's never said that ever. And more. Yeah. and I love that. Um, but, you know, he can offer just, you know, a, advice from afar, opinions from afar. And I was like, all right, I got that. And it didn't feel like at that time we were going to get to 150 days to the bottom. Like it felt like it was going to be sooner. And, mm. you know, sure enough, like that January of 2020, that that was it and we were off now if you had waited 150 days i think you might have gotten a dip oh, march april something like that so yeah. uh april i think is when the godwill came in and then we'd never look back yeah um, but yeah, that, that was my history with you know getting into the crypto you know hex traditional markets i'm still involved with traditional markets um uh to get back to your um, name question. Um, uh, I've just always got, you know, parents always took me to the beach as a kid, loved it. Just loved the, for whatever it was I appreciated at the age of, you know, like under 10, the peace and serenity. It sounds weird to say, but I just love the ocean, man. I just love to go in and, you know, boogie board and all that stuff and laying in the sand, playing in the sand. And, yeah. um, yeah, that, that's, you know, I, I, and to this day, decades later, here I am, and I, I just I, the love and affinity for the place on the shore has never ended. So you know, whether it be Delaware, North Carolina, Atlantic City, Ocean City, Florida, all around Florida, love Florida. Um, I try yeah. to get you know to the beaches most as I can, and that's kind of just you know where the name came from. So. And Miami's got the best. I think the best beaches domestically in the U.S. Miami, and then I would say Hawaii my favorite beaches uh in the u.s at least uh, debatable but depends upon what you're expert. looking for in a beach i'm not an if expert so you tell me yeah you tell me where, where if you're looking for well it, it, it depends on so many variables man so if you're looking for like nightlife and stuff like that miami um no question um but if you're looking for like actual beach experiences like in my opinion like gulf coast naples up to like the whole panhandle tampa golf is nice golf is nice Destin. i'm always afraid of hurricanes every time i go there but the golf is nice yeah yeah but i mean really i think statistically your odds of hurricanes are probably more likely on the east coast so like uh yeah. uh west palm beach stuff like that like uh south central florida southeast florida uh, stuff like that. So it seemed to wreck Texas every single year. Uh, yeah. Hard to live there when you're, when every three years, uh, the streets Galveston is canoe. Yeah. yeah. Galveston is, I don't know how that's still a city. Like those people are, I, I don't know. Well, like technology the, the has gotten way better. I mean, they, they, people yeah. know how to build better. So it's unfortunate. Like you get these earthquakes and hurricanes in these third world, you know, Caribbean nations and their infrastructure, and buildings architecture is just not up to what we've come up with over the the decades so we can we can handle it and rebuild much quicker it's it's really sad you know some some something down there um out yeah. in the the eastern caribbean gets hit because they're they're behind the eight ball on that yeah they lose everything but still i wouldn't want to rebuild like every few years i don't know how people do it i just i, I couldn't I don't want to live anywhere where there's a chance of natural disaster where like my house gets flooded or whatever. I, I don't know. Maybe that's why Pacific Northwest is so nice. 
I, I Besides agree volcanoes, with volcanoes. We're pretty good. But I mean, you know, hey, a lot of hexkins are in Puerto Rico, so that I, I I've been there. I, I I love it there, and the uh, certain financial. But you got to live there. Uh, so, so so why don't advantages you, because, because are, are good there, there too nowadays? So. Because you have to live there. I mean, what everyone says, oh, you know, what what's the bad like? What would what makes you not just go to Puerto Rico? Like, why aren't you there? Me? Yeah. Um. It's it's not the weather at all. I think it's just yeah, yeah. the the government could potentially change on a dime. I am no expert in that, but uh, that you and, don't trust the good deal is going to be there forever. I don't, um, but it, it could be. I, I don't. I don't really care. Uh, I'm good with uh, the standard of living here, and if the standard of living there, from what I gather, if it ups its game by quite a bit then I'll feel a lot better and maybe I'll, I'll be there someday, but not there yet from what I've seen and heard from some friends down there. Yeah. That's, it's, it's just, uh, I always like to see the both, both sides of it. Cause you see, you know, a lot of people say, Oh, I go to Mexico. It's great. Go to Puerto Rico, you know, go to go Thailand, all these different places. And a lot of them I've, I've traveled to, I've, I've been to all those places. Yeah. Um, and I know I live there. Hmm. The the cool thing is to be like f u government and f u taxes and I, I get it and respect to you if you financially benefit from from pulling off that move and you can do that at that point in your life so you know awesome but I like America a lot I like hanging out with Americans so I think it's only I've always you know in in my earlier days I was like oh I'm gonna I'm going to just live abroad. I'm going to, you know, go to Japan or I'm going to go to Europe, and just, just live there and just, you know, it'd be so romantic. It'd be all this cool stuff. And, all, and then now I'm just like, no, I like it here. I like it. It's not, it's not perfect, but I don't know. I like having, I like saying hi to neighbors. I like, like, you know, having this I, culture. I, I, like I agree with you, bro. But at the same time, like I do understand why people want to get out. Like you, there are times oh, that yeah. you just get completely frustrated or enraged. I mean, I'm just speaking personally. Yeah. Um, so I, I just, I wouldn't make such a decision like that in haste. Like I can certainly appreciate you know the the financial side of it but you, you it is a lifestyle change so it, it, if you have the means and ability to do that go for it and you're comfortable with it do it yeah i mean to each their own everyone has different values and, and things they 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 want in life and uh yeah to me it's just like eh, i like i like the domestic i like uh the the mainland uh i got a question from michael light Ben has been a Hex community for building a long time. What does he think of the community? And how can we keep it all together? How can Hex community help new people coming in on Pulse Chain? Well, that's a couple questions uh, and a long one. Uh, <laughs> let's see. Uh, how can we keep it together? I, man, more fighting. It makes yeah. us stronger. Yeah. No. <laughs> see, I. <laughs> it's it's so like timely that you say that, obviously, but. Uh, yeah, it's like, ah, oh, man. Uh, I definitely say more fighting. And because that unites people, it brings us together because you can't hit somebody when they're far away. You got to really bring them in now. Is, is, um, it, is it the key? Like, did a lot of these problems come from keyboard warrior type stuff? Like, I, I think the, it's if, more. If people were in a room together, they would be a little bit nicer, wouldn't they? Oh, always. Absolutely, 100% always. Um, I, I think a lot of it is bear market. Um, a lot of it is we, we've grown. So this this would not have ever even been thought of, in my opinion, in uh, the summer of 2020, you know, when you got, um, you know, Hexo doing his show, RG3 doing Discourse Syndicate during like daytime because there's nothing else to do. And, um, you know, Crypto Coffee out there. I mean, I remember these guys, you know, I hopped on their streams um, and, you know, that it was such a uniting kind of experience. And it was such great, I don't know, just bonding for the community at the time. But we were also small. So now, I mean, we're, you know, we'll, we'll say 100,000 plus stakers. I know everybody's got a lot of wallets, but 
stats are stats. Mm-hmm. So we'll just go, you know, mm-hmm. we'll we'll say that. <laughs> but number looks I, good. Yeah, the number looks good. Um, but still, I mean, the numbers still go up, right? So it's the number is much higher than last year, much higher than the year before. So it, it is going in the right direction. And that's what's going to happen if you bring more people into the mix. So my, um, yeah, Michael Light just commented there is like my, uh, the, the pulse chain um, has revealed the hexy maxi vibe. And that was my biggest fear when we start, we first started talking about pulse chain on happy hours. Like, you know, this is a, it's, it's not a time lock product like hex. Like this is going to be a new layer one where you want, like, this is the playground. You want all the weird bows and weird equipment on your playground. You want them all in like mm-hmm. this. You don't own the entire thing. Like that's, that's hex. Like you, you have it, you, you do what you want with it. But this, you you invite everyone in, and you want that because you know that makes the success of the product in the end. So uh, it's just more yeah. more people over time. I, we're, we're, we'll be fine. It's just like nobody is ever going to. Not everyone will get along together like that. That's always my yeah my hope as a human. Uh, will, will never happen. Like even you know I'd have like a random one or two people that I disagree with, but I'm also like not trying to call anybody out. I, you know, I'm trying to encourage at least, you know, on that show called happy hour, uh, especially, yeah. uh, 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 you know, a, a vibe that, you know, brings everyone together. What, what y'all do out there in the Twitterverse, social medias, um, you know, pretty much I l- love every guy and girl out there that i can think of that you know I, I love them all but man a couple of them disappoint me but for the most part like 99 percent of hexagons just are outstanding and um yeah uh, we'll all get along eventually like biffiness is there so it's like what, yeah. what, what can you do you can't make people you know do things so you can just hope for the best yeah, I think that one of the things that I've learned that's helped me not create drama, I'm not a very drama person at all, um, is just not having emotional response to everything. Like right. when somebody says something or you see something you don't like, you know, this is not saying you shouldn't, you know, stand up for people or you shouldn't like say something when you need to or, or you know, stop something terrible from happening, whatever. But if you have the right information and you're pretty certain that you're doing the right thing, caveat, but just, just when you see something, I, you know, I see stuff every day on Twitter. I'm just like, wow, that's really dumb. Or wow, I can't believe, oh, they're, oh, that's the way they are. Or, you know, stuff like that. If you scroll enough, you'll see enough stuff that you, that's going to offend you or, or whatever, or make you not have them good feels. But what do you gain? What do you benefit from like engaging or like, like just berating the person or calling them out? Like, what do you gain from that? I, I just, um, I, I guess... A it depends upon the person. Yeah. I mean, I think some yeah. of it likely uh, depends. Uh, yeah, I guess. It's like social back. status jockeying. Like, it's like I'm taking points yeah. away from you. But there's there's a lot of that. And it's not even like the, the anger side of it. Like I see um, people that own Hex, OGs, you know, uh, call out, you know, certain people or want to know who who's better or who fa- actually I should rephrase that who failed at this who did not tell you about this and it's like what does that gain yeah the the community like keep it on a on a positive vibe like don't don't be like you know who who's the worst you know because it's like here's a thread name your worst hexagon like yeah why why would it why that's not right but again i think it's like products of a bear market it's like we have nothing else to do right now as soon as pulse chain launches like we we think nothing about this and you know we're we're all good but until then all the insecurities come out yeah it's like the spider-man thing you know so it's yeah i just I, i think i just look at things too i just don't want I don't want to put negativity out there either. Like there's nothing wrong with constructive criticism. Like getting good feedback is good. You don't need to be a a yes man. You don't need to like just say everything's good all the time. But if you're going to criticize someone, yeah, it shouldn't be like you said, shouldn't be like, Oh, you know, 
they they failed to tell you about this or or they oh they one time they said something nice about this person who turned yeah. out to do a bunch of bad things whatever just i construct it yeah. like be do it if you're going to criticize someone do it in a way that helps them or yeah. lets them see something or in in private in dm i mean that's that's the way yeah, you know, i do things is, like i'm not gonna true. like put somebody on blast on on stream or at least i never tried to um you know you know yeah, we the, we the have yeah, we have a lot of fun on the show, but we'll do a lot of tongue in cheek stuff too. But it's never really calling anybody out or anything like that. So, uh, speaking speaking of not calling anyone out, Maddie's yeah. uh, Maddie's stream. Let's let's just hit on that while we're in this conversation. Sure. So yesterday, uh, Maddie invited a lot of us. Uh, I'm fortunate to be one of the ones invited, Cabana as well, <laughs> uh, to to uh, a stream that I, I didn't know what it was before and actually i was just it was just like stream of 20 people talking about it. i'm like cool yeah oh, that sounds fine the last thing he did was pulse conference that turned out great yeah that sounds fun and uh it turned out to be you know he wanted to i guess get feedback and kind of pitch his ideal for the smart smart wallet smart vault smart smart vault mm -hmm. and you know just kind of get kind of i guess crowdsource feedback for that or see what people thought live uh, kind of talk about it a little bit and, you know, maybe get people in the telegram kind of funnel people there and stuff like that too. So, um, you know, it seems like, I think I came in on the third hour or so, yep. which was like the fourth hour cause everything was like pushed around a little bit late and stuff. Okay. Um, but yeah. And with, and so I think I was in there with K for K and, uh, who else was there? Gerardo was there for a little bit. Some of the devs, some of the, I guess, technical people, coders in the community and people doing projects, stuff like that. And, you know, just a bunch of questions were asked. He was trying to explain the different nuance about it. Um, and I, at the end of it, I was just kind of like, I just don't have enough information to evaluate this thing. You know, I think he yeah. wants to keep some of it private. Um, no, I and think, uh, that's smart. Yeah. Uh, I think he, uh, in general, it was like just like a concept reveal. And, you know, I appreciate, you know, an invite, you know, and as I'm sure you do on like, you know such a <laughs> three different panels and stuff like that uh, but like you said it's like we we're gonna need more information and maddie can't give all that out right now um I, the concept sure love it um uh, my my issue or not i want to say issue uh because i love the concept it's just like okay i want more people in this because this encourages good behavior um how can people be motivated to get in is it just out of their oh i'm going to lock my coins and you know that's it like there's a lock there so i'm going to voluntarily put them in I, in my experience I, I think people need like a little more carrot on the stick than that so it's like I, okay what you're pointing to i think is the, the lack of and maybe this is going to be a feature later on or whatever and kudos for not doing yet another coin I, I that. <laughs> but the yield aspect of like what am i getting out of it for locking it up other than playing this game that's healthy for me what am i getting yeah, like, I, I, how is it, I don't it? even want a coin like tangent uh you know went in all that pretty hard and i agree like not another freaking hex coin offshoot coin something right. that will pump hex all that stuff no pass um, but, but how are you going to be incentivized to use the product i think it's what you're getting i think it has been the biggest criticism is like okay, right with, so with the, another coin the you that, can stay earn yield with this one what are you what are you getting you know? yeah the thing that i can think of is like the uh the one percent kind of thing um if that were somehow like created as a incentive you know for yeah, if somehow that one percent, I see it's it's hard because I I'm not you know behind the scenes on this, but if somehow that one percent or a certain percentage could be held out there to be like you know what I didn't you know emergency end stake or I took the longest or something like that, um, you're ending my stake then then that's it. I, I something like that. I think uh, Motley had a good idea there. Um, you know, along those effects. Another thing that I was thinking of that I brought up is like, you know, how can this be better sold to people? So it's like, you know, the building of a firewall kind of thing. It's like, you know, man, you know, a lot of people get hacked. A lot of people get scared of, you know, that certain thing. If they don't know what they're doing, if their security protocols aren't, you know, up to snuff, 
and a lot of people's aren't really um, if they knew what they were doing. But at the same time, it's like, would they know that their security isn't that good? You know, because <laughs> yeah, that's the why adopted. they get hacked. Everything but, keeps pointing to the adoption part of it. I'd be like, yeah, what, how big is the firewall market, right? Like the product market right. fit as far as but, that goes. You see some of these, you know, a, a big hack or something like that, and maybe that's when you hammer that home um, and try to get people in. So I don't, I don't know. Just like yeah. uh, Johnny Chaos was like, you know, if you if you give somebody a, a hammer, you know, where where are they going to do with it? It's like, okay, well, here's your time locking mechanism. Yeah, you know, are you are you going to use it because it was given to you, and here it is, or are you just going to like? beat yourself over the head with it and he's like a lot of people are just gonna not know what to do with it and yeah i think it is a great concept and to be you know if you know uh, if it's endorsed by richard hart that's awesome i see no reason why i wouldn't do it um you know it, mm, it's, it'd be interesting it's if richard endorsed it I, yeah I, I think the concept i mean it encourages you know great a great behavioral mindset and that's that's what we want here that's what we need especially with two new coins coming up with you know a lot of supply and we're we're taking on you know the you know other dexes and layer ones let let let's do this we don't want to like screw up because i mean we've seen massive hacks in hex and, you know people uh, being lax with their security or making mistakes and uh, we don't want that happening you know if we can prevent it on pulse yeah. chain and pulse x so yeah i think it's just he's definitely got to get the incentives right for it to be successful and um we'll see it sounds like it's uh not quite built yet so it may be maybe some time but man, we got some time before pulse chain comes out so maybe maybe the timing uh is is okay too but i definitely would like to know more because it's hard to reason the technical you know brain and mind is like yeah i want to see all these different paths all these the business logic and stuff but I don't see that. It's kind of hard to reason about and evaluate these type of products. Um, and it sounds like he's still trying to figure out a couple pieces on it too. Oh yeah. I mean, there's, there's a lot of work that goes into these things. So I'm excited to see what actually is the, the final product there. Gotcha. Uh, yeah. I don't know if Richard endorsed it or not. Did not. I didn't actually only talked on, I thought I was late for the whole thing. <laughs> And then I hopped on. I was like, "Oh, actually, I was thirty minutes in the green room." So, yeah, I've, heard, I've uh, seen comments that he did, but I've, you know, we—I don't think ever seen an actual endorsement. But I don't know what qualifies as one. I guess it's like a tweet or something on stream. But um, you know, a lot yeah. of hexkins I've seen have said that. So we'll see. He, he and it's not out me. yet, so it doesn't really matter. He does endorse many products that aren't his, so it definitely. Right. If, he, if he did endorsement, that would be would be a big deal officially. Uh, stay couch could be the concept, not the actual product. I don't think you can endorse a product that's not even unveiled, right. audited, whatever. So makes sense. But yeah, Richard, that's, that's a good point. Yeah, Richard's always. I mean, he's called out Maddie uh, positively on uh, certain live streams, you know, just for his uh, thoughts on delayed gratification. So I think that's that's probably where the endorsement comes from, which is good enough for now until we actually you know get something to. To see pulse chain september november november <laughs> you've heard it here the bane dev of pulse chain has called it november no 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 i i don't think we see it until november but yeah november, uh, minimum nice. minimum nice. but yeah that'd be nice i'm still going with january I, I, i'm not gonna I'm, I'm i'm tired of uh being dis. i don't know that's not even a good way to say it I don't think I have been disappointed because I'm not making plans based upon this stuff anymore. At least after, after like April, May, I was like, all right, nobody has any idea when this stuff's going to happen. So I'm just not going to like, I'm not going to make any, any plans around the, you know, bags and stuff like that. So it's just, it's Michael just Light, it. like, we're going to rage if you're wrong. Okay. okay. Yeah. 2024, yeah. five, six. All right. going to throw a rager on the beach. That's what we're going to do. <laughs> yeah. Um, Oh, here's a, one more question on Maddie's project. Do you think we will see the blockchain when Pulse Chain comes out? See, do you think we'll be able to see on the blockchain when Pulse comes out? I don't understand the question. I don't understand that one. See on the blockchain when Pulse comes out. I don't understand. Jerry, say it again a little differently and we can uh, mid May. Mid May. Pulse launch prediction in February. You know, 
You can't be disappointed. I think that's the if latest window. The day up, if we if we don't have yeah. by May 2023, it, it's fake. It's a Cardano. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> that's a good question. When when is the point where you're like, uh, what's going on? Like when you really start doubting it, like. 2020 uh, if it's if it's like december 2023 are you gonna are you still gonna be like oh yeah it's still coming are you gonna be like richard please give us announcement that sound good please yeah i mean if it, if it took till then i would be shocked so sure like i i would be that I, way i, these I don't are, think it's these are wor- these are imaginary horribles like yes yeah, imaginary horrible like, i don't, I don't think gonna it's not gonna happen that's gonna there's happen. no way like it, uh it was uh Richard wants glory. You don't get glory spending two and a half years on something like like yeah. that's, that's like my Ethereum. my dream scenario is we get a pulse chain launch December, nice. and that way, like the highest of stakes will have had time. Or excuse me, I'm sorry, I got it reversed. Pulse chain launch November before Thanksgiving. That way, you know, everybody can get around and talk about it and stuff like that. And then mm-hmm. the highest of stakes uh, in December. That way they could, but like the final scene is, or not the final scene, but Pulse Chain is mentioned towards the end and be like, boom, we have a layer one coming. So you thought Hex changed the game. It did. And it's gonna, and it's gonna continue to do it. Pulse Chain, you haven't seen nothing yet. Boom. December. Mm, okay. Highest of stakes launch. Dream. See, I want it the same week. I want it to be like uh, if, if I think the ideal. You're too greedy, be... my friend. <laughs> <laughs> no, I want it to be like. And now, uh, now, if you want to see what this genius founder's next project is, go to PulseChain.com, and then it launches at like midnight, and then just everyone's just bananas. There's fireworks and chainsaws. That that would be badass everywhere. Yeah. It's just people are just mowing each other down, trying to get to the computer to spend the trans bank accounts, like the banks, like. Uh, so there's like so many things that are frozen because there's so much crazy stuff going on. <laughs> like it's uh, like that kind of chaos that, that is the, ca- that, that dare I say, could that, could that kind of chaos and like crazy stuff get us into, get us out of the bear market? I'm not saying straight to bull, but I'm saying like, could it be the catalyst to like, okay, we're yeah, going mean, to sideways launched in a hex launched in a bear. And I think we're, I mean, I see a lot of bears right now, which makes me feel starts to make me feel more bullish. Um, mm. uh, September hi- is historically the mm. worst month for markets, and you know we're we're starting that in about four hours here on the East Coast. Um, you know, another thirteen and a half or whatever it is till the next session opens. But um, yeah, I. There's a lot of bearishness out there. Um, I don't think uh, I don't know if, if there's that many bears out there. It it kind of gets me thinking a little counterintuitively, and I'm seeing a lot of people flip yeah. bearish now. the The reason is well warranted. Like uh, Jerome Powell uh, came out last week and was just like basically, you know. Jump the off a Fed, bridge, everyone. The Fed will cripple the market, you know, as long as we yeah. want until we get it where we want. That is very bearish. Do not fight the Fed. Um, but at the and same time, he just got fired. Yeah. <laughs> at, at the same time, it's like, all right, well, we that that's about the worst you can hear. So now we expect yeah. rate, you know, hikes, you know, into the winter. We have the playbook, so. I don't know. I'm not, I'm not yeah. going all in tomorrow. I'm not going all in, you know, next week, but I, I think the next few weeks and or months could be potentially life-changing opportunities for a lot of people, not just in traditional, but in crypto markets as well. So. A lot of people wanted hex at uh, three or four cents. And now they can't handle hex at three or four cents. Yeah. So sad. Well, the only reason in my opinion in my opinion, that we are getting it uh, at four or just below four, whatever it is at right now. Um, we have the 200 million dumper. Pretty much, it seemed like a market-timed um, 
reaction. Like he emergency end staked. I think it was right after the yeah hours Dr- after I think yeah Jerome Powell uh, comments that you know the Fed's gonna control the market as long as it wants. Boom, emergency end stake and nonstop selling. I think we're down to like fifty seven million right now. So fifty seven million more to go. It's got one more stake. Early December comes out. Uh, I think it's one hundred fifty million, and then he's done. So. I hope uh, Pulse Chain launches after that, so dude can dump his bags and yeah, yeah, before then. So bull market after Hex Dumper guy finishes. Yes, finishes maybe. But it's like <laughs> we've seen so many of these dumpers. I would love for the bull market to start after all these dumpers, but they're there will they'll never end. So somebody's always gonna uh, take advantage of it. So. I saw a question in the chat where to get them at uh, hexmerch.com, I believe, a while back. So there you go. Hexmerch.com. That is a famous website with lots of merchandise for Hexkins. Merchandise. <laughs> it is. I uh, wanted to ask about, you know, pro- well, hmm. I'm trying to see which direction I want to go in this because like, I want to talk about community. Uh, yeah. projects. We as touched well. on that a little bit. We can still go there or wherever you want. Not quite, not quite that community. The projects, it, which which there's some relationship to. Yeah. But uh, well, we're on hex. Let's, let's is is hex in 2020. This kind of like leads into what you were saying too. 2023 is hex a top five crypto again? Uh, bull market resumes. No question in my mind. Just resumes. No, no question. Um. We get back in a bowl, it's gonna gonna pass pretty much everything. That's um, not Ethereum and or Bitcoin, and it could pass those both by the end of the year. No predictions there, but definitely top five, in my opinion. Is you know, do you think we'll be ranked on Coin Market people website? Uh, <laughs> Is there gonna be a Coin Market, market cap? people? Yeah. Yeah, uh, market cap? I Are we can't get, say I, 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 in this in this, in this uh, ecosystem. Yeah, I can't say I care anymore, really, man. I mean, we've gotten this far. It, it's almost like a badge of honor to not be. So I, I really don't care. Like it, it's we. <laughs> our, the founder came over to the states. He got on pretty much. I mean, within two weeks, some of the biggest podcasts, just uh, as you could, like a, a bit boy, fresh and fist. Uh, fresh and fit um just within days weeks you know just through contacts what what could he do here if he were to come over here for a year or just months so there's that we have a documentary that from the quality i've seen of this trailer is just going to be absolutely amazing um so if something like a netflix or prime picks it up this was all done without any listings on coin market crap con market crap whatever <laughs> you want to call it um who cares at this point yeah. I, I i used to want it and i still do i mean it, it's it would do nothing but benefit you know hex and i think the ecosystem in my opinion because as long as it's not there aren't coins held by an exchange but even if they did there would be a limited supply because who's who are they going to get from so yeah. uh I don't, I don't care anymore. It's, it's a, it feels good to say that. <laughs> it's, it's weird that, uh, you know, I, I guess the, their excuse is that it's not listed on any big centralized exchanges. They can't tell the volume, um, but like, first of all, why, why does that matter? You, the volume is more transparent on the DEXs. You should have better numbers. Yeah. Like, but people screen. aren't that smart to, to look at such it things. It doesn't which... make any sense. It's like, you're supposed to be, are you just like this, like, you would think the crypto sites and the most popular ones would be the most forward looking like, Oh, we're going to, you know, whatever problem we can solve it. We know how to get the data. We, you know, we're, we're not going to hang on to these like old metrics. Like what, I, there's gotta be some meeting the team of people who do these type of things. And there's gotta be, I, I guarantee they hear hex all the time. Like they're like, at least weekly, there's probably meetings where they're like, okay, well, well how much hate hex hate mail have we got this, this week? Like, like, is there no one there that can just come up with a number that makes sense for raking for, for, for the coin? I just, it's mind boggling, man. No, they can. They just, 
they're they're not going to. Why would why would they promote something that is decentralized and they can't benefit from that they can't get ads from that they can't get you know people you know paid to talk about from it's disgusting and I understand it and there's no rational reason like right there's no, there's nothing they don't they have no leg to stand on oh it's corruption and yeah. it's disgusting and we're used to it by now and we're well into you know years of this thing and we're good i i really don't care anymore didn't didn't i last year i i would have wanted it but i'm kind of like i really don't care <laughs> like, yeah, like with, the, with the roadmap I, uh, when i say roadmap like the documentary and um you know just the the access to interviews richard's on fox business i mean it, none of this stuff was imagined it was imaginable six months ago in my opinion Maybe. I remember when Richard was on CNBC Africa and he, he was talking about that so much. And I was like, man, come on. We got to get you on like not CNBC Africa. <laughs> any, any other that's where show. Rand was, right? Crypto man Rand. I guess. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's where his show originated. But I mean, nothing against CNBC Africa, but like for, for Richard, like there's, I just remember him like promoting that so much. And I'm like, I, well, you, I gotta know. Start, you have to start somewhere. That's how marketing is, though. Like you take every gain that you can, you maximize it, and then you move on to the next. So it's like a, it's like a, yes. you know, the next rung in your ladder, and you just grab onto it. It's it's a, you know, the crap rung. It, it could be rotting, but the next one is even better. And then you just get up and get up, and get up. And oh, yeah. I think that's what it did. It's all for a reason, yeah. It's yeah. Uh, fresh and fist. Fresh. And it fist. sounds like a show. It sounds like a boxing show, like a. Like a who wants to be the leave next it to Bit Finesse to catch that, but yeah, thank you. Bit Can't Finesse. wait for the documentary. Where in the world are you nowadays, bro? Bit Finesse, he's a uh, he's doing East Coast, I think. By uh, he travels a lot, I think. From what I'm talking, yeah. yeah, I think by his Hex comment Wood, last night, the Tax Woods, it was a flashlight, it was two flashlights, yes, yeah, it was, and a sock, and a sock. I mean, there was a pretty girl beside him, so you got to blame him. <laughs> can you blame him? Um, that's something I want to talk to you about, too. So, again, community projects, like what are some of the stuff, the derivatives, you know, you got Hedron, Icosa stuff. It's so hot right now. Yep. Um, the per Perpetuals are about to launch with Team and Maxi. Um, what, how, do you, how do you evaluate some of the things where, you know, clearly – splitting buying power is a real thing um but if it's a derivative and it's things that you know they represent hex in some way or they are hex in some way how do you how do you sort of like evaluate which ones are good for the ecosystem which ones think they're good for the ecosystem but it's more hopium and yep. which ones are just like okay never going to touch this thing yeah i mean it's i pretty much ask like myself like two questions like and if i can't get past those like I, I'm, I'm done only good time of day one um if it's in the process of being built so it's like hey you know there's this new thing that's gonna launch soon okay who are the de developers who are the devs do we know them are they you know well known in the community do they have a history that we can look up um that's my first question um, if not, then red flag, red flag, red flag. Uh, the second, um, and I think this is like a blessing for the hex and mainly pulse chain community is the, excuse me, the pulse police telegram group. Um, mm -hmm. just an outstanding group. They, they run through, you know, the code of all these, uh, projects and, you know, they'll, they'll point out any flags in them. And it's pretty plain to see, and they'll review them. And there, there you go. So, those are my the the first question is: Do we know the devs? Second is: If it's a finished product, go to Pulse Police on Telegram, read what they say. Boom. And if if, there, if is it a red flag if they only have like if their website is just just if if there is no website or it's just like go to Telegram. I always I'm always skeptical of these Telegram tunnel funnels. It's like. Can yeah, you but give me a few sentences of what the what the thing does before I have to join your Telegram and ask all these questions. You know. Yeah, uh, even if it's like a freaking 
<laughs> a clone of a dog coin. And we, I guess we, I don't know, I'm not going to get into dog coin <laughs> names, but if it's a clone of a dog, you got, coin, you got a long list of stuff you can bring as examples. Just, yeah. Right. Dog. But I'm just saying like, you know, say you have a dog coin and then you have another dog coin and then there's someone who doesn't like that dog coin. So they make their own dog coin. Then they create a telegram group. Then they make a website. So they've they've not only done the Telegram group, they've made the website, and it was still total BS scam crap. And so it, it's not just a Telegram group. Like you can make a website for cheap now. Like you can do all that stuff. You can run Telegram bots and have you know all all that stuff to make it appear like you're bigger than yeah. you really are. Um, which is I'm just extra skeptical if there's only Telegram. I'm just like, okay, is there? I think per, you know, public website appearance. It, at least to me, it means something. It means like, okay, you guys got your stuff. Like you can, yeah, tell but me you can clone is. a website rather easily too. Well, so. yeah, I'm, I'm talking about all the tactics for like the scams actually used. But I'm just saying in general, like if there's only Telegram, I'm like, I oh yeah, don't, yeah. you That's don't even have a hook to get me in to this yeah. project. Like I, I need to know. I need to be able to evaluate it like on a surface yeah. level before I get involved in your, in your group. Like, yeah. And they're, they're like, I mean, some of these things are such shows, man. So it's like, Oh, uh, where, where, where is dev, sir? Hello. Hello. Hi, hi, hi. Where is dev price going down? Where is dev? Um, uh, uh, I try to stay yeah. away from telegram as, as you can tell yeah. too. Like and I, I'm I mean, very, I've poked my head into some of these rooms and it is so sad. And like you, like the, the prices of these coins just cascade down and it's like wrecked, wrecked. I'm buying, I'm buying Oh, dollar cost average guys. And I was like, all right, these are probably bots telling all these. Here's people, a chart. Here's a I'm chart. DCA. Here's a screenshot. I'm DCA. Yeah. Yeah. And it's okay. And then all these people are like, okay, well, if this guy's doing it, I'll put some more in. Oh, it's excruciating. God. Just like even. Ugh. Yeah, think about. So besides hmm. Telegram, what, what what are some green flags for you for projects? Know the developers. Uh, it is approved yeah. by uh, Pulse Police. Um, I don't know. I mean, the, there's a, like the first things that I think of, like uh, the, the personal references are awesome. Like referral, even in real life with sales, business contacts, you know, someone can actually speak well of someone else. You, that's a personal referral. You get multiple people talking good about, Oh, I've interacted with these guys. You know, you know, these guys are cool people. Um, you know, you can trust these guys. Okay. Well, I'm not going to take your word for it, but you got my ear. So, you know, we're friends. I'm going to listen to you about this guy and then I'm going to see what else is out there. So I'll do some online research and then, you know, way more than Telegram. But yeah, it's just like the basics. You'll never really know unless you have an in. But, you know, there's there's the first steps where I start at least. Yeah. Do you do you differentiate between, you know, the ones that like, for example, in my opinion, Maxi, he drawn all, all these things like this that are actually part of the blue chips, the stuff that, you know, RH has made, we want to see succeed. Everything kind of follows those in, in a lot of ways. Like if hex fails, all the other derivatives fail too. Do you, do you differentiate between the derivatives, the stuff that has obviously positive feedback loops, brings utility, liquid loans, you know, they, you know helps you never sell, all that stuff like that. You differentiate between those and, uh, you know, it taking maybe capital away from buying, buying the blue chips directly with what they provide and the, the positive uh, price performance that they're supposed to have with just projects that are like, okay, we think this is going to bring adoption, but we don't really know, but it's, we got to do, you know, I think it just seems like a lot of people just, they just want to do projects. They just want for themselves and they, they talk themselves into doing that project because they, you know, oh, well, we got to try, we got to, you know, we got to try if it fails. Sorry, we tried, you know? Yeah. That or just, yeah, that, that's the part that sucks because it's like people are free. It's a free market. People are free to speculate on crap that they want to. So I own a couple memes, meme coins, whatever, or one anyway, actually two. Um, but I'm not all in on that. That's play money to me. I'm not selling, you know, I'm not going to go out tomorrow and sell my hex for it. I'm not going to go sell my hedron for it. I'm not going to go sell maxi for it. Um, you know, but you're you're free to to do that now. 
when it comes to like trying to say th- this is like the latest trick in the game, right? It's like, you know, it, this is meant to uh, pump the price of Hex, the price of Pulse, the price of Pulse X, or support it, whatever. All right, so I, I can agree with that, but what are you going to do to show that? I agree with the concept, all for it. Like anybody who is in Hex, Pulse Chain, Pulse X, like you want stuff like that. But what are you Telegram going to do? Telegram will tell you. Yeah, roll Telegram well. But what are, what are you actually going to do that's tangible uh, in regards to that? And very few things, you know, yeah. actually end up doing it. So um, otherwise you're just owning it for the fun of it, the hope that, you know, hey, these guys put together something, you know, they're, they'll build, they're building something in addition to what's there or, you know, just, just speculation, which is fine, but there is a cap to your speculation. Like you can't just be like, bro, I'm going like all in like 90% of my stack on this. Cause this is going to change my life. Cause I heard like, this was going to be awesome. And now I'm going to put my entire reputation and all my followers and I'm going to shield the crap out of it until it does what I want it to do. Yeah, bad, bad, bad. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, uh... It's interesting, man. I think a lot of drama comes out of all the, there's, I mean, there's so many personal connections in the community to so many things that, I mean, people can say stuff they don't mean and things like that. But when you start messing with their money, right, you start like they, they want to show a project or, or whatever. And you're like, oh, this goes against my principles or I don't like it or, or something like that. Then you got to balance. Okay. Do I just pretend to be nice? Do I just like, silently kind of like okay you know I'm, I'm gonna let you talk about it but you know i don't really support it and then the other people are like oh why, why aren't you saying why aren't you calling out scam 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 it's like there's this huge dynamic of all these uh like emotional responses there you go try to not be try to not have emotional responses to everything and see how much better your life will be there you go um financial freedom now you as someone who prefers the beach over any other place in the world as i've learned you know can so I'll tell you my position on financial freedom, just, just to kind of set the, set the framing. I think that in the world, in a capitalist society, not like it needs worker bees. Not everybody can be financially free. It leaves meat on the bones for the people who want it the most, go out of the way to do it, do all these things. If everybody stopped working, if everyone quit their jobs and just went to the beach, you lazy bum. That's good. And the world would be... <laughs> But it's just a desktop wallpaper, everyone. He's actually in an office. He's been working 60 hours straight. Uh, I'll go for a swim. We'll be right back. Oh, God. Oh, he's going to dive into the... Oh, there it goes. Yeah. Um, if everyone stopped working, the world would be a lot less productive. GDP would... Like, it, it would suck. So, yes. in, a, in, in you know, in the, the least worst system we've came up with for human being interaction and wealth creation stuff, that's just how it is. So, um, how, do you, how do you see financial freedom in... Like... If you get to a certain, are you going to stop? Like when you get really rich, if, if you're assuming you're not already really rich, but is there a point where you're just going to like go off the map and you're just going to be like, all right, like, like what, what is your, how do you think about your, your future and your ability to, um, you know, get, get what you want and not have to have a boss and things like that. And how can people, how should others think about that too in their lives? Cause I know a lot of people want it, but they, and they say, oh, you know, invest in hex, you're going to get it all this stuff, but like, how do you, you know, what do you do once you have it? I think you mentioned a couple of things there. Like the first part is, and I think I talked about this, um, you know, towards the beginning of the show, it's like kind of like the stair step approach is like when I was getting in, like in college, it's like, okay, well, what do I want to do? I want to get a, I want to get a good job and then I want to advance at that job. And then I want to invest my money and I want to do better things with that money. And then, you know, maybe own a business and then, you know, grow, you know, my investment portfolio and then potentially one day, hopefully sooner than later, sooner than I'm like 65, hopefully 50, um, you know, get out of the rat race. And, you know, those are the kind of stair steps that you want to have. So many people are like, nowadays it's like you know what what's the quickest way i can do this how can i take on leverage to get there what meme token can i get there oh shib did this you know what's the next shib what's the next this what's the next that 
And, you know, sure, a lot of people got into an asset like Hex, but how many people really just that was their 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 first time into something and that's it it's it's like okay we we really did good and that was i it, all it took was this i've i've been looking for this my whole life no 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 so many people have gotten wrecked i've gotten wrecked like so many of the ogs have gotten wrecked like and you have to take those losses and learn from your failures. Like even the smartest OGs I know in this community um, have made mistakes. That's how you learn. So it's like you, you can't just look for the quick win, but at the same time uh, from those failures, you, you learn to keep at the game and learn what to look for, learn who the personalities and, or, you know, what you look for in a founder, what you look for in an asset. And then, you know, you, you, you have the courage to go in a little bit bigger into those. And, you know, it's just a learning process. So too many people just want to over lever and, you know, get in too big or find the, the quick entry. And it's, it sucks, man. Um, I think I saw a stat like uh, yesterday, like 30, Eight percent of uh, Manhattan is uh, only back to work now. Like 38 percent of their office space is like filled back after co- like long after COVID now. Or you know, yeah, can, I guess we can say that. In the big cities, for sure. But it's, it's like, and, and these businesses, like you know, the Goldmans and stuff, are like, okay, guys, come back to work. Come back to work. And you know, but people are like, no, them. well, we're productive at home. And they're like, no, we actually, you know, need you to actually successfully build this business that where we can quantify it. We want you here. And they're fighting it. So now it's this fight of, you know, people not wanting because they've been conditioned for the past two years of this nonsense. Um, it's, it's, it's rough, man. So uh, for uh, somebody who's trying to build a business. So it's this, you're, you're stuck as a business builder against this mentality of people who are like, well, I don't need to do this because it's been proven that your, your business has gone on, but I haven't had to come in to the office. And it's like, Oh my gosh, man, it's like a negative feedback loop. So we're trying to get out of that. Mm. So, 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 you know, what happens? So have you hit financial freedom yet? I I don't like to be like, hey, I'm like retired and stuff like that. I, I like to say I make fiat for fun. So I have a I had a company and still I guess have it. So I take care of some clients. And yeah, I mean I'm 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 good with my life now. You know, I, I I'm 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 cool. So what if you had I'll, another I'll say that. million dollars? I don't like to flex like that. Like no, if no, I no. do a hex flex, I'll do like something that promotes positivity. So around like Christmas, I'll be like, get out there and give or, you know, do this or, you know, let, let's encourage each other. But yeah, I, I, I'm good, but I, I still take care of some of my clients and, you know, I, yeah. I'm using that fiat to buy some traditional market ass- assets. Cause I'm trying to, um, you know, appreciate my t-shares. Um, you know, I made, you know, some mistakes early on and I'm rectifying them as the, the months go did. by. So. Yeah. I mean, retirement it doesn't mean you, you don't have to sit on a beach and just like hang out every day. Like to, to me, retirement just means you own your own time. You're able to work on whatever Absolutely. you want, when you want, you know, all that stuff. So if, if you had, so, okay. So it sounds like, you know, you're pretty much your own boss. You own all your time, at least stuff like that. I just asked that to be like, so if you had a hundred billion dollars, let's say Pulse Chain goes to a penny in three years, <laughs> whatever. We're all rich if that happens, by the way. But let's say it happens. A little um, bit, a little bit. Yeah, a little bit. I think we're all good if that happens. If you put a thousand dollars in Pulse Chain sack and it goes to a penny, you're good. Um, let's say that happens. You're wild, you're rich beyond your wildest dreams. You're you're you know, uh, you, you you've got some you got some capital to do some stuff with. What do you what do you think? what is the biggest impact you think you could make with, with money? I know money doesn't money solve money problems. Right. Yeah. But like, what do you think, you know, would your trajectory in life change? Like where, where, where would you try to uh, do, do good with it or just Scrooge McDuck it? Like what, what, what do you think? No, no, no. Once, once, you know, I'm comfortable, family, friends, comfortable, um, start a, 
a, a school. Um, you know, I don't care how small it is, but our, our kids need education nowadays from the ground up just because there's so much corrupt uh, education working against them. So, yes. um, it, you know, whether it be like, you know, through my church or something like that, but that's, that's like, I think my, my like dream goal eventually. Okay. Sorry, Just cool. like there's, there's nothing more than to, I think there could be nothing better than actually um, enhancing the upbringing of, of someone and, you know, their values and proper education. Um, yeah. It, it's we, we, we've seen the about. effect. We've seen the effect of not educating people with yeah. healthy values. So. Uh, right. And two that, years ago, I would never have given you that answer. So. I, I, I don't know what man. I would have said. So, yeah. You would have bought the Lakers, wouldn't you? Uh, NASCAR team, but yeah. Anyway. Oh, no, you got to buy you got to buy the Lakers, and then you got to buy the stadium to change it from crypto.com to hex.com. No, Damn. no, no. That's no, the right no. answer. Stupid waste of money. Oh, but wouldn't it be cool if we, remember we had a soccer team for a week? We had a soccer team for one week. We did. Uh, and, but wouldn't uh, it be cool this? Hexo cool trolls like? them pretty much every loss that they take. So yeah. uh, every time I hear the word Barnsley boys, I think of Hexo now. <laughs> For better, for worse. Um, but wouldn't it be cool to have like, uh, you know, the Toronto Raptors or something, Hex.com Arena. It was, I know, you know, the RI is probably not going to be there, but that it, it sounds kind of cool, right? Yeah, I mean, stuff like that's awesome, but it's like, um, I don't know, like so many other people could do that with, with their money. So if let them do that and then I'll do something that I can change the world in a positive way with. It's true. Yeah. I think, uh, yeah, people I've been on stream and people ask me, Oh, what do you, what do you, you know, if you, if you were super, super rich, what the first thing you would buy? I'm like, I'm not the type of person to buy a Lambo. I'm not the type of person that would, that would get the uh, yacht just crossed my mind, yeah. but I, I would just, uh, well first make sure my, my entire generation is set up. We're good that way. And yep. not in a way to spoil anyone, but like, make sure, you know, they got oh, the right uh, stuff going yeah. on. Carry and, on uh, yeah. Yeah. And then uh, just, just, I mean, foundation, charity work, just giving back, making the world a better place, whatever that means to me, yeah. translate that into what the money I can make the money work for. Yeah. Um, so a lot of philanthropy, uh, I can imagine. So. No, I, I fully agree with that. Now, when I say like obscene amount of money, like, you know, I'm going to have a boat and a plane before I do this stuff. So I'm just saying Gotta treat yourself. Gotta get a, <laughs> a, no, a, no, I, to hat. get to all the places that you need to go, and it just makes happen. sense, right? It's a business trip when you take the yacht to from one island to the next. It's a business trip. Yeah. No, but uh, please do not. It, uh, it not, all not tax advice. Stuff. Not tax advice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's my treasure in the Caribbean. Oh God, there it is. Okay. <laughs> um, we have a very successful Lambo team. Yes. <laughs> Hex.com, the only Formula One Lambo team in the world. Um, I want to talk to you about... And we had the first game. NASCAR, just saying. All right, anyway. We did have NASCAR. That that lasted longer than uh, soccer. That's true. Or, sorry, football. Football for all my viewers outside of America. Football. Football, yes. New York Tornado Cash. Uh, Red Bull sorry. was like a team there for a while. Is that, their still, is that still their sponsor? Uh, Whose sponsor? MLS. Uh, New York Red oh. Bull. Maybe I just saw the. I know they sponsor Hex.com. I don't know about the MLS though. Yeah, definitely a lot of Hexans definitely uh, are sponsored by Red Bull. Not me or anything, but a lot of people. A lot of people like it. Um, I want to ask you about the Tornado Cash too, because that's something that came up. And as a privacy advocate, um, someone who I mean, pragmatic libertarian, uh, someone who values this stuff a lot. You know, if you if you can't. You know, people say, oh, what is the quote? Uh, uh, you, if you have nothing to hide, what are you afraid of? And it's, it's kind of like, and the quote is like, okay, so if you have nothing, uh, you know, should you just never talk? If you have nothing to say that, uh, you know, it's like so many, so many dumb rabbit holes uh, or like turtles all the way down on that one. But tornado cash sanctions, for, how do you, I don't know how you sanction a smart contract. It happened, whatever they sanctioned USTC indirectly, whatever it was. Um Bad for privacy, bad for your rights, bad for crypto. How do we, what, you know, do you think 
of all the crypto millionaires, isn't somebody going to fight this? Somebody going to come out put their billions of dollars they made? They're like, oh, this is not right. Got to be yeah, somebody. I right? mean, I would certainly hope so. Like maybe even not directly through a lawsuit or something like that, but like politics. Like you got to fight fire with fire. Um, the example that comes to mind, uh, I'm trying to think of his name. I think it's like Bruce Fenton um, out yeah. of New Hampshire. Um, like you have to throw it back in these people's faces. So he went on his Twitter account and he was like, I am posting the code to tornado.cash and here it is. And he's like, what are you going to do to stop me? And it's like, those are the type of people that we need. Just be like, you know what? Stop. Like, are you really going to come after every single person? What if every single person who uses these services or protocols does something like this? Are you going to nitpick? Yeah. Cool. 87,000 agents, all that, you know, meme stuff. Um, yeah. There, there's that's not really just to target too, but... you know individual citizens like there, there's more behind that but it is in a sense like that's kind of the direction things are going still um so yeah you have to take the 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 fight to these guys and the 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 way to do it i, I would certainly hope because there's so much money in crypto like lot so many like billionaires with a b that I would think there's like some fun, some pact that has to be in development somewhere to be like, all right, you know what? We're pulling our money together. So when, you know, freaking midget Gensler comes out in next year or in 2024, and it's like all crypto is bad except for Bitcoin and maybe Ethereum. And CBD, right. C CB, uh, central bank digital currency. Yeah, whatever. Uh, garbage. They do something like that. Yeah. It's so enraging. Yeah. So I'm really curious to see how the XRP lawsuit, um, you know, shapes out. That's taken, you know, some turns and that'll provide a, a framework. But then you also have the CFTC. So there's so much that that goes into it. But it, yeah, in the end, to answer your question, you got to take the fight to it, man. Like you can't just be like, OK, regulate me harder, please. <laughs> No, no. Oh god, that memes in my head now, but it's got all the all the syringes instead of uh, that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Govern me harder, daddy. Yeah, What's that meme. Pass. Yeah, pass. Hard pass on that. Yeah, it's. I mean, there's so many billionaires, and there's so many smart ones too. They're not dummies. Like, how are they not have some super pack of like privacy, freedom? All this they stuff. might, and maybe we don't know about it. And there are actually, I mean, if if you watch like when their blood boys leaks it, I want to get the leak copy from the blood boy from one of them. Yeah, I mean, if you if you you know watch like um, you know politics, like it seems to me just surface glance, like there are a lot more uh, say this time now than there was a year ago. There are a lot more politicians that are mentioning. Uh, blockchain and cryptocurrency in a positive light because they're understanding the importance of it. They're understanding, you know, the importance of, you know, your money. They see what's happened in Canada um, or they've seen what's happened. In Canada I hope so. The, I think a lot of them don't really know what blockchain is. They're just, their constituents yeah. bribed them, but I hope yeah. it turns out good in the end. Um, but even then blockchain wouldn't have solved that because of Bitcoin. I mean, if you know how to use it and you have a tornado, that's why I guess the U S is, you know, banning code, but North Korea, North Korea. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 It's the justification for everything. Yeah. Well, Peter Thiel, I really hope he's, he's been one of my heroes for a long time and he's a rich billionaire who likes crypto and uh, all this stuff and libertarian, of course. So I hope I keep waiting for it. I'm like, Peter Thiel, when you, Peter, if you're watching, where's the, where's the super PAC man? Where's the, you wait until the election, like come, come save us from these crazy sanctions. Well, like, that uh, and like the Winklevi and like so many of these guys, Shamath, it's like, are you guys just a bunch yeah. of pussies or like, <laughs> are you just cool with your wealth? And, you know, is that it? Because it to me, it seems like that. Questions, legitimate questions. I, I don't see anything like, don't you want like, to preserve that? Or are you so good now with your life and your billions that you want to keep your status and not let anyone else, you know, advance with the freedom that you on social media, you know, puff your chest yeah. out and be like, oh, I want everyone to have this. This is freedom. And 
or you're not doing anything about it. Do, what, what do you think? think? People, you're just sitting there you think, silent. You think people get disconnected from their principles and their values once they once they get to a certain, you know, billionaire status? You think they're like, oh, you know, they got so many things going on in their in their own businesses that they're just kind of like, well, you know, I mean, they, they like still it. practice it, but like they, they don't care as much as the next generation. It's easy for that to like fall out of favor. I'm sure it gets easier, but if you're the if you're the only if if you are a personality on social media and you are saying one thing but not acting on it, that's where you know I, it gets on my nerves a bit. Um, if, if you want to ride off into the sunset, not say anything, I, who know who knows about you? You know, I don't. You know, none of social media does. But if you're out here on Twitter being like, uh, "This is." You know, Bitcoin is freedom and it's the people's money. And then you do nothing to advance that. Then you're, you're kind of making your own self a target to the people who are needing you the most. So it's like, shut up or like get out and fade out into the sunset. Oh. Yeah. It certainly helps some people step up because uh, we could use it. They're not, uh, you, you don't, you don't get more freedom. You typically get less, a little yeah. bit at a time. And people who think they can vote themselves more freedom. Yeah. That, where does that work out? So careful, you, careful. If you have a lot of money, you're only delaying it. Uh, eventually it's uh, you're going to, you're going to be like the common, the common person who has to deal with the cameras on every street corner and all that crap they have in other countries too. And a lot of places in America, of course. Yeah. How do you, before we wrap up, Goals, I don't know if you're tired. I'm tired because I just did a stream before this. <laughs> All selfishly, good, man. Selfishly, I want to wrap up soon. Not that you're not <laughs> interesting because it's been a great interview, of course. I'm just like about to pass out with fasting as well. All so good, man. It's catching up with me. I need some caffeine. But uh, how do you get the most t shares? Like DCA, make bigger, uh, make bigger stakes, bigger, pay, bigger pays better, long pays better. What is the best strategy to get more t shares and to like really? really be a true hexagon in that way. Like really be like you leverage the system to its, to its most. How do you do that? Um, I mean, the easy answer is to buy now and stake today. Um, my personal answer is like, and this could be an answer for a lot of people who are already in the system that, you know, maybe didn't um, do the best with their early staking strategy. So when I first got in, I staked for all 15. It's just, I had some hesitancy because I didn't know how this would all play out. So I staked pretty heavy for the first five years and I didn't stake as much, you know, year eight, 11, 15. So what I've been doing is, you know, over the past, you know, eight months or whatever it is, is staking those, um, you know, early end stakes out further to gain more T shares. So, like as an OG, I, I see some out there who are like, "I've this is the most hex I've ever had." You know, so don't mm -hmm. accuse me of selling. Well, that's kind of misleading because you can have a ton of hex and way more hex than you've ever had, but you could have also sold a shit ton of hex on the way there. Yeah. Now, if you can say that you have more T shares than you have ever had, it's a better then measurement. To me, that's the measure of a hex can growing in the right direction. Now, you're always going to be an OG. I don't care if you've sold hex, whatever, and you have T shares for another 15 years. But I'm just saying, like, that statement is like, you know, I, I have this much hex, blah, blah, blah. But if you're growing your T shares, that's a great question. I mean, you know, I'm trying to do that because I realize the value of them, and I know a lot of OGs are trying to do that. Um, it's yeah. T shares. It's, We're talking know, about you, B shares you, now. There ain't no more yeah. T shares left. Yeah, and I mean, you had you know people you know in late 2020 before big payday realizing this and doing emergency end stakes, and it's just like, okay, I I get it now. Like I, I'm you know gonna gonna restake you know some of this stuff further out and that's that's the way to do it in my opinion so it's like yeah. who, who knows you know where we're going to go in, in the near term because you know the we have you know the fed coming up and all that P -hex but... coming up man we got p hex coming up yeah 
P hex or the hex or the hex and E hex or the yeah. yes. I asked Richard on uh, during the conference, uh, should we think of uh, should we think of it? Well, me and Tindy, me and Wendy's for Tindy's were talking. What was the question I asked him? Something like, should we think of P hex as like hex? I can't remember the question. Anyways, I asked him and he said no. So me bringing it up means nothing because I can't tell you the conversation. <laughs> but anyways, I asked him that question and he had an interesting answer, which was different than what uh, me and Tindy's were talking about. So that, that, that means nothing. Sorry. Sorry. I even said it, <laughs> uh, but I, I do want, I do want to go out on a, on a kind of a deeper philosophical question too. So just to prepare yourself, Uh-oh. What, do, what do you, what do you, what do you think is your purpose in the community? Like, what do you hope to achieve? Man, it is to get the most followers and subscribers on the YouTubes and Twitter. No, just kidding. No, that is, I don't know, man. That's, I think it's like, were you, actually, like, were you imitating someone else? Cause that sounds like a real thing. Sounds that's like a, a lot thing. of people. Uh, and I don't, I don't, I really, you know, good for them. No, I mean, if you look at, you know, the happy hour, uh, stream channel, which is mostly what I do anymore. Um, it, it's, it's a, it's kind of you know, in that question. It's like creating community and having a place where you can come every week, hang out. Um, you know, it's like a, we bill ourselves informal but informative um entertaining but educational uh so some shows it's like really fun we'll celebrate people in the community um you know like motley's retirement or uh freddie quotes drop of uh the furus video or something like that just like cool events in the community or we'll like bring in like a panel on pulse chain or hedron or something like that so or maximus um so it's 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 my way of bringing people together in kind of like a, a happy setting. Cause it's like, I, I guess we covered it earlier in the show is like, there's a lot of s- stuff out there that it's like, it's going to happen no matter what we do as streamers. So let those guys have at it. But I want, you know, my show or our show, happy hour panel and all of our, people who've been with us for years now um to to come and just hang out at the end of the week and chill and talk some crypto and maybe catch up on some of the news that you might have missed and you know maybe we'll do, yeah just do a fun trivia kind of thing like uh, it, it's like microphones friends a couple drinks and that's that's my you know contribution not taking myself that seriously at all like I, I know it. I know plenty enough to get around. I, I love the markets. I watch them all day. Uh, but at the same time, I don't want to talk charts and macro and recession and inflation, you know, when I get on stream with my friends and people in chat. So yeah. um, it's like a community thing. And I love going to these meetups. I was just thinking about it before we got on stream. I was like, I don't think I'm doing the Vegas one, but I was like, Man, I've actually done probably six to seven meetups in the past year. So I was like, I don't really feel bad at all about it anymore because I've done like at least yeah. a half a dozen of these. That's things. a few. It's, yeah, it's it's so cool, and I can't wait to do more. Yes, Marion Cabana's yacht party one day. Yeah, so there you go. Yeah, yeah, I, I think about it sometimes too, especially since I haven't been streaming for that long. You know, I have an interesting. I have, a, I guess, a unique story where I've been following Richard since 2017, but I've been active in the community until like you know, basically uh, what, February this year or something. I, I got Twitter and started talking to people. Uh-huh. So yeah, I just I go back and forth. Uh, but I'm very, I mean, I have I have a lot of convictions as far as um, you know principles go, and uh, you know, no monetization. Uh, I just don't want anything to like take my work. Um, I want to provide substance. I want to make sure that, you know, I don't do clickbait. Like I, or I try to avoid as much as possible. I don't want anyone to click on videos and like not get, not be disappointed, not get what they're expecting. I always feel like robbed if I, if I do that people's videos, Oh, they, they, they'll say some outrageous title. I click on it and like, that is not good at all. Like, yeah. I don't like that. if I do anything like that anymore, mm-hmm. like I'll put a funny title on it or I'll just like grab one of Richard's photos or a screenshot from somebody else's streams with him in it or something weird that people can immediately recognize, throw it up there and that's it. Like I don't have like a yeah. 
graphic designer or all caps i'm not gonna be like stream richard yeah. launching now open open the show yeah. like like and subscribe to my channel like i i, know. I may have said that yeah. like once or twice early on i try not to even do that anymore because i really don't care like i want people who are actually like into the show want to come and hang out and then the vibe just spreads to where you you attract more people who are just like you know you see them in the chat interacting with each other asking great questions and you know it just becomes like a, a cool little yeah. hangout and that's like that was kind of like my goal in the beginning and i'm just like that this is what it's become like we have like hundreds of people watching us on a friday any given friday evening it's like what <laughs> yeah awesome yeah cool. it is it is i like the party the kind of relaxed atmosphere for sure um yeah that's i think the community has given me so much even even when i wasn't you know when i was passively a part of it i just feel like you know richard always says you know people ask him what, what should you do with the community what can we do better what, what can you do and his answer a lot of times is have utility like have utility utility yeah. means you you value add you do something you help yeah. people you do something and i'm like not that. saying like we have that kind of utility like and we that's where like, you go to learn you go to cabana's happy hour yeah exactly no drunk, but like the last those one brewskis, that was good like we had sloth you mess up numbers you mess up all the statistics not at you all stake, but... <laughs> you stake out of you uh you you do five 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 that's and, right uh Hoodle yeah. dog five 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 stake you make you make one day Five. stakes yeah. on uh, on every third Tuesday and then <laughs> yeah but no I mean you you need you know but that's what stuff. that's why this community is awesome because we have yeah. like new streamers like you coming in we have heartbeat on the pulse chain side we got um, even you know, new products or projects launching their own to each their own um, you know if you like their content you know awesome well I can subscribe right here yeah. There you go. <laughs> And uh, yeah. it's like, you know, there's so much to choose from. But if you want, like, great educational content, you know where to go by now. You know to go to Huddle Dog. You know to go to Coffee. Um, you know, the, it's, it's all there for you. Whatever you want, like, whatever your flavor is, there's something out there in this community. And that's why it's, like, the best streaming community in crypto. I, I really think it is. I think... We, it's so hard for us to pull these amazing stats of being this or that in crypto. But if you're looking at the streamers, I, you know, of course, yeah, I'm a little biased. We both are, but it's like, we got some, we got some quality, we got some quality content coming out every day. And yeah. there's people, there's multiple people that stream every day. And yeah. there's uh, people, you know, I, I've been streaming two or three days a week. I'm going to slow down. But um, I mean, just the work, the energy. It got to it at some point. It, yeah. <laughs> The energy and effort that goes into this stuff, um, I think, you know, it now, compounds. It, it let me shout you out, man, because, uh, you know, Motley, I see him in the chat. Uh, he always gets on me about show prep. RH Max does show prep. So I'm, I'm just saying, like, you, you come on the show, he, he does some show prep. I, do. I respect, dude. I respect. Because, yeah, I, I just... Yeah. From one person who doesn't really get the respect, <clears throat> Motley, uh, that... Uh, you know, for show prep. Yeah. I appreciate you RH max. So good job. Thank you. Good job. I, um, I, I can't do it any other way. My, my <laughs> brain is like, my brain is like, make a doc, get some good questions, do your research. Right. All right. Just have sure a general layout of yeah, topic yeah. of conversations. Yeah. Right. There's, there's a spectrum. I go hardcore sometimes where I'm like, okay, I want to cover all these things. I know these are really interesting. If it's something, somebody who's really technical, like, you know, there's different interviews. There's the dev interviews, there's the casual interviews, there's the community yeah. interviews, there's, you know, there's all these different flavors that go, that have all their different, you know, uh, all the different good things you can, you can bring out and talk about. And that's what I like talking about with you, because, you know, it, to me, I can talk dev all day, I can talk co code all day, all that stuff's great. But also, I want to see, I want to get the vibe of the community. I want to understand yep. People have been here for years. I want it. I, I want that nuance. I, I want to bring that stuff out to show people who have been here. So many people been here 18 months and they just don't know. They don't know what it used to be like. They don't know how it feels. They don't know how we got into it and why we got into it. And uh, it's not I just bring crypto. It, it's like you have guys like Big Pep who talks uh, traditional markets. So, you know, usually on Saturday mornings, he'll do like a news headlines kind of thing, which is something I always had in the back of my mind that I want to do but he doesn't. So awesome. Like 
actually it'd be cool to like do a like maybe a monthly show with him or something like that just for us to bounce that back dixon piper's another one so he's on with uh wendy's a lot he does a lot of traditional stuff um talking about you know the the fed real estate um you know so there's it's not just crypto but i i I say i say that because that's important like the the traditional legacy markets affect crypto no matter how much you know crypto bros don't want to to believe that yet i thought we were decorrelated no (laughs) it it is correlated until it's not and we are fully correlated so i mean you know the the fed you know cutting or raising currently raising uh that's that's quite important right now and i think that's going to be big until next year so it's like that that's a whole nother um thing that actually has direct impact on the crypto markets so it's it's we're, good we're to gonna see. end on that super sad note thanks for that geez i thought we were like riding this emotional high and now we're just true bear market you suck ah. all right well you know i have bearish and bullish notes so i can like give you one of each before i go you're one of those truthers aren't you i uh, am yeah. no wait what no <laughs> don't classify me in which which context we just yeah, <laughs> exactly yeah. Well, man, uh, it, it's, it's been a pleasure, Sharers. I, I really yeah, enjoyed man. meeting you. I, I've tuned into your streams a million times. I've said 500 messages in chat you've never posted. That's cool, though. Uh, it, I, I like – no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I mean, maybe a couple. Maybe a couple. I'm like, you know what? It is a beat stream. I don't think you need to pay that much attention to chat. I think that's – Oh, you're talking be- the YouTube chat. Okay, because yeah, I'm like yeah, – yeah. I've been bad at checking pretty much everything except like – twitter DMs oh, no. lately we're not gonna get into that you're bad at that too but just, just talk about on your show on your twitter show. dms are pretty good but telegram i'm bad you gotta but follow me man i'm I getting can't dm you if better. you don't follow me or unless you have them open Maybe all right i think i i thought i had them open i know it's a short list i know you don't follow many people so i, I don't it's very like short you, i'm sorry like georgia pump, but yeah. georgia you asked me to follow you maybe we're just be hard okay, okay. anyway this is a joke the from oh, the latest okay. discord the other way yeah. oh okay okay this i know it remind me of the, the the girl that wants richard to marry her and <laughs> yes that's it that's, that's oh that's her that's her okay i have no idea i just thought of that okay there don't mean go. to step on your toes richard yeah. just saying no, you know, hey, get she, in line, she did man. ask me get to follow her okay. not but it's it's not richard it's okay so, yeah I, I i about have as many uh people i follow as you so i'm with you same page man snap page. i i don't i hate like going into it because it's like I use it as a utility. So like I have like lists that I'm developing and uh, I've already like started it. So yeah, I'll just say it. Like I have lists like that I'm like slowly constructing of like, you know, these hexagons are great, you know, on this topic and or streamers and whatnot. But I try to keep it concise because the way the algorithm works, if you say something that's, you know, pretty cool, it gets passed down around the community. I'm going to see it. So you know, and I'm also paring down like people who just talk about like shit coins. So I'm like constantly, sure. you know, weeding out, you know, people like that. So, yeah. Well, I think, yeah, uh, yeah, Johnny that, Chaos. Can... I apologize. Sorry. Using <laughs> the you... chat. You... <laughs> I so did. I so did. I, I, then, like, oh, man. I didn't check it till after the show. I felt so bad. Let me know if Is you it... want to come on this Friday, even though I know you're retired, Johnny. So, yeah, there you go. Like, let me know. I won't check my messages, but let me know. <laughs> <laughs> you two are uh, Max. All right. There we go. Uh, yes. And subscribe, sir. No, I, I mean, I, I judiciously use the mute button too, um, unfortunately, or fortunately, I guess. Uh, you gotta, yeah, I you gotta, actually got to keep the timeline out of chaos. That is a great point. If we can just touch on that real quick uh, about sure, community, yeah. go for it. Um, using the block versus mute button. It's a, it's a very good tool. Use mute, and then I don't think they can see if they muted you, but if you block them, I think so. then they can see if they blocked you, and then they can become more enraged, and then tell all the community about it. So yes. just mute them. So yeah, if the you don't want to hear from them, nuclear. mute them. The New- okay. block button is nuclear. I rarely ever do that. I basically only block people who, fortunately, I've been uh, f- fortunate enough not to have a lot of negative interactions, but uh, I think I only block like literally like scam, like spam accounts. I've only used it for that. Everything else, if yeah. I'm like, yeah, I like you, but I don't want to hear everything you got to say. Yeah, mute. Agreed. I'm blocked by a few people. Most are Bitcoin maximalists, like 
one or two weirdo hexagons. I still love you, but you're weird. Um, I have no idea why I'm blocked, but I just noticed that of you know somebody else telling me. But don't talk about was... on bags, bro. Yeah. No. Yeah. Whatever. Now then. <laughs> um, are we gonna see a quick question before we gonna wrap it up here? Head around lower price. Have missed a train. It's a bear market, but I'll let I'll let Cabana take it. Uh, bro. I mean, if we are looking at the chart, we are breaking out right now. So we broke out from like thirty, like what is it, five zeros three eight. So we are like five zeros four three right now. That's a breakout, man. So if you want to, I hate giving financial advice. If it were me, I would either get 10% of what I wanted now and maybe hope for a lower price. Or if you're trying to get like a retest to that five zeros and 38, 39, maybe set your bid above. 38 so maybe five zeros and a 39 mm. and maybe try to grab that retest but i hate giving trading stuff advice because i don't really do that anymore but i try to get it on entries for long-term stuff that i just put away so that's that's how i use charts that's a whole nother conversation but i know you gotta yeah. go bro so okay. I, I, I've, <laughs> I've been re-energized by this good conversation i have uh i get back to i just wanted to one more comment. I have a, had Johnny Case on the show. No, I met Johnny for the first time uh, last night in the green room, and uh, it's a pleasure to meet him. We didn't talk very much, but uh, would love to have him on the show. Set set it up. As Richard says, you do the work. You do the work. Tag me and Johnny and uh, get him to... Uh, I think you're going to have to go practice. after Johnny. He's retired. He's not seeking out streams, so go after him and get him. He's, a, he's a great, great listen and great conversation. I may have I may have left a note a couple times in the last few months. I may have, but uh, oh. now that he knows who I am, maybe, he'll, <laughs> maybe we can talk further. Maybe we talk further. If I there remember, I don't know. I talked to a lot of people the last few months, but I, I think I, I think I might have reached out before. I try not to bother people. Like I reach out, and if I don't get a response, I'm like, okay, cool. They're just not a good time or whatever. Maybe later on we'll talk. But not saying he did that. I'm just saying, uh, I'm just saying. Yeah, I need. I'll get in contact with him. It was interesting to hear that. It's funny, like we were in the green room and this great conversation was happening in this like debate on, you know, all the all the good stuff, stuff happens in the green room. And man. I'm like, why are we not on? Like, <laughs> people should be knowing this right now. This is a great conversation. But uh, right. Uh, anyways, everyone, thank you for tuning in. Go follow this gentleman at Cabana Crypto on the Twitter, on the YouTube. He has a Friday show that uh is is uh in a very competitive time slot that i i'm actually i think i'm gonna stop streaming friday it's just because uh it's just there's first of all i need a break second of all it is very competitive and i'm just going I okay you maybe stream till like seven or something yeah seven eastern that's right so it is okay. it's coming off the tail end of yours i guess yeah um but there's other people that there's always like this Friday streams. Like it's like a, yeah, discourse ladies. The if they do one, it's like eight so you're sandwiched. And then Richard was late the yeah. one two weeks ago or three weeks ago. So I kind of like ran in yours. So it, it sucks, man. I mean, it's a good problem to have as a community. Cause it's like you, you back in the, like the first year we were like, you know, I'd like to see another stream. This, this stuff's pretty cool. Now it's like streams are running over each other. It's like, all right, this is, this is good. Good problems to have though. It is good problems. It's good for the people, you know, but it's uh, for the streamers. It's like, all right, am I getting 15 today or am I getting 75? I don't know. I don't know. We're going to roll the dice to see who else is streaming. Who's uh, who's better than me. So, and just, just to clarify, it seems like Johnny chaos will come on with you. He is in. I hope I don't want to speak for Johnny because he may have shunned me, but you're also down to play for happy hour. I'll send you a link because Randy Hilarski is going to be uh, on this Friday, I think. Oh, Randy. Randy's Randy's time to talk. Talking Schmidt. Ta. Well, thanks, Bobby Hexarod. You kicked this off. You did the work, sir. Appreciate that. Uh, Mr. Chaos uh, will be great to get you on the show uh, and or be on Cabana's uh, stream with you as well. It'd be fun. Uh, UFO in the house, you're awesome too. Appreciate you coming a lot. Um, everyone, you know, I didn't say it, but somebody else did. And then the other buttons, if you could press those <laughs> as well, right. maybe other people want you to press those buttons. I don't want to say it. You know what to do. Um, follow me at RH Maximus, just the way it sounds, in case you're listening on Twitter. And uh, let's see, I don't think I have any more shows. You know, usually I schedule like a month ahead of time shows pretty much. I think you're my last one I've got scheduled. 
And then at PulseCon, I'm going to try to stream live there on day, I, I was going to say day two, but now we're not doing six through nine. It's like seven and eight. So yeah. now I'm on day one PulseCon, I'll be streaming um, at some every point day somewhere. Day one, pulse con, yeah, sure. every day is day one. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a day zero PulseConian. Uh, we just need, uh, you know, if you could just kindly send Cabana 350K, he'll send you 700K back. And oh then, boy uh, we can no that never happened i did Sorry, not say that, that. <laughs> That's, uh, i'm pretty sure we agreed on it in the green room he's going to split the profits and it's going to be uh we fixed it we fixed the conference no worries no it should be a good time but you're not going to be there it sounds like you're not going to be there no i don't think i'm going to like i said i got uh, like so much going on i have like other trips planned in the coming weeks i just i, I don't think i can like it's probably a, the best decision for me to just like take a break from my summer travels and then chill for like a couple weeks before I go back at it. So, and also like the uh, million pulse tour, i um, looking forward to that too. So um, I got that on my mind. So I'm like maybe early 2023, I'm going to be taking time to do that. So I'm going to spread stuff out. I have a lot of stuff to take care of here. So, yeah, I hear you, man. Get some, get some rest. Uh, you know, it's a bear market. Pulse chain hasn't launched yet. We're kind of just sitting here. We're just talking. We're just talking a little bit. We just talk, talk, you talk a little bit and uh, <laughs> enjoy yourself in the meantime. Yeah, bro. I, I will. And you do the same. I mean, we got, um, it's, it's a good opportunity. I just don't want to like leave the stream without uh, saying that to a lot of people like the next, weeks maybe months um you know make the fiat and if it were me not financial advice if it were me i would make the fiat and put it to work just that's that's all i'm saying like in the past like since the 40s we've had uh nine instances of spikes past five percent inflation all have led to recession. This is the 10th. Are you going to be the cowboy that goes against it? Or are you going to be a little patient and maybe get some bigger gains? That's But this time it's different, bro. I have Could a portfolio. Be. That's what makes the market. So. That's true. Uh, people making good decisions, people making bad decisions. The market is uh, full of both. Stale and money. Don't make no money. Bullish OX. True. I see you, bro. Yes. <laughs> This is the and time, man. It's the time. And uh, yeah, it's, I don't know if you, I think a lot of people are tied up in, you know, the sacrifice phase and stuff and dry powder is not easy to come by as it used to be, but boy, boy, look at those opportunities. But your dry powder can get way more than it used to right now. So get the dry powder. Especially if you put it all in on these shit coins coming out, right? Then, then that's the plan. Then you get a solid 10x, pull it out before everyone dumps, and now you can go buy hex with it, right? That's uh, I mean, galaxy guy, brain type plans. The guys over at Maximus have a plethora of products coming out in the next week or so. I'm just saying. So take a look at some of those. Lots of lots of good streams out there with uh, crypto coffee and others. So I got I got to look at my books too. I got to look at my books. That's uh, yeah. missing missing a team, missing perpetuals, missing uh, that stake staking pools. They're all the new rage for good reason. They are legit staking pools. Are Passive income, legit. Awesome. Clip it. Somebody clip that staking clip pools that. are legit. Yes. All right. See you, man. Uh, thanks for coming on. Thank and, you, brother. Uh, I will see you all. I'll see. Oh, I'll see you in Vegas. If you're in Vegas, I have these shirts. For free, I sell you nothing. I sell you nothing. Rich your heart. Each one has a different year, 2017, 2018, 2019, 2020, 2021, 2022. Whatever year you started following the Richard Hart and you don't care, you're not offended to get a free Maximus t-shirt, come see me in Vegas. Hopefully I'm going to be sharing a booth with Dipcatcher or somebody somebody else that's uh, awesome. Come get a free shirt. I got some uh, cups. Get away these cups as well. All free stuff. Just you don't have to do anything. Just literally find me. And if I still have them, I'll give you one. Cool pins and stuff as well. Those of you who are going to Vegas, Cabana, uh, you're gonna have to come to Vegas if you want free stuff. So I can't, I can't do anything about it. I can't. Quite I all right. Can't. Or Maybe you're I'll gonna have to find it later on eBay for like ten thousand dollars. So like limited supply. NFT it. Limited. All right. <laughs> I'm, I'm going now. I'm going to open. Does it say right like now. and subscribe on the back? 
Uh, How do I do? No, it actually is not branded at all. It's not branded. Like, actually, 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 is it still? Can we still make it? Can we still put it on the back? No, I would not do that. I don't. I, I want you to follow Richard, not me. Uh, everyone, have an excellent uh, rest of your midweek, and we are 